There should be audio now. I just forgot to unclick the button. <laughs> Thank you, Blazemo. So I'll have to redo my whole intro thing. What I was saying, it's great to see you, uh, Blazero and Morten, and I can't wait to, to get to know you in real life on Saturday. Sounds good now, yeah, except for my voice. Maybe you understood by my mimicking. I still have a cold. I, I, I actually know exactly when I caught this bloody cold. Is when I was streaming last time. Mm. On Thursday night was freezing in my room and I thought oh, I don't need heating and as soon as I ended the stream I was like yeah I needed heating and then the Florencia weekend didn't help to recover and let me see uh, uh, uh. but yeah I was saying I spent all day in bed drinking tea haven't made I've cancelled all my plans for the rest of the week so my only goal is to recover in time for the weekend. Um, true if I see, good to see you. Um, <laughs> I see Morton and Blazer are discussing uh, costumes. I will dress up as well. Uh, I think these two guys will too, so there will be some fierce competition uh, for the fancy, fancy dress prize. Um, talking of Florenciel, I was just saying, Florenciel hasn't helped me recover from my cold, just made it worse. So speaking of Florenciel, late earlier today, how is this command word? Oh, fuck sake. How do I, why is this laptop always dying on me? It's just always leaving me on my own. Can I? Open the pop up chat here. This is a disaster. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Okay. We have the oh, chat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to struggle today. If you saw my announcement on Twitter, I'm not actually going to be playing any chess today. Um, once I get the show properly underway, all I'm going to do is going to show you my games from this weekend. Because um, I promised I'd do that yesterday, but yesterday I just I, I couldn't do anything. I was feeling absolutely dreadful. Still don't feel great. I feel like this time around, I'm like, I put on the heating uh, in my room, but now it's like 50 degrees or something. So I need to find the middle ground there at some point. But what I was saying, so... I was just about earlier uh, to put the link to my latest vlog, uh, which we published this morning. I think it gives you a good glimpse of what's going on behind the scenes at the Forensial Weekend. A mix between some serious chess and some debauchery. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Some social, social fun. <laughs> Let's call it social fun. I think I'm going to be struggling today. <laughs> um, what else? What else? Before I start looking into my games, uh, there's a lot of chess going on right now. Today I watched all of... I watched a bit of Magnus against Dingley Wen. I watched the World Seniors because my, my former coach, well, my, basically the only coach I ever had, is the... Um, playing on the, in the over 65s, he was on top board today. Then uh, Luxembourg has a representative in the women's plus 50, she's actually the top seed, so we could have, I think, what uh, would be our very first world champion. Uh, and also I had a look at the games from the World Junior Championship. I was a bit disappointed to find out there are only nine lifeboards, but what to do. And then finally, of course, I watched the. Um, finally, I watched uh, the Northern Lights Open, where Simon is playing. Uh, Simon made a draw today, I think, which is not a bad result with the black pieces against a dangerous Chinese player. And no, Blazer, the tournament isn't over yet. I think it's finishing uh, tomorrow, last round tomorrow, and then. I guess Simon has to hurry back to organize this crypt, crypt event. Uh, G moves, Frozen Edge, good to see you both. Um, G moves, uh, 
Blazerow is referring to the Northern Lights Open, which is being played in Reykjavik right now. Again, if you joined the show late, this is not my sexy voice or something. This is my Fiona has got a massive cold voice. Fiona has been drinking a lot of water and tea the last few days. I think my main focus really is getting back in shape for the weekend, otherwise I'm not going to survive Simon's event. But enough uh, of the talking, I've got the chat back up, I think. Um, yeah, GM moves or G moves. Last you saw of me, Jan and I, yeah, I think that was round eight of the Euro, Euro teams. Um, which we actually in hindsight shouldn't have left because that was one incredible game between uh, Rauf Mamedov and Grant Melkumi and this end game where Rauf was completely winning, then allowed a fortress and then Melkumi and still cracked in the end. Like flying sources, what are flying sources? I don't even know. Okay, but let me get into the play zone here. Um, there's also, oh yeah, the reason I was late, again, I promise I'll stop doing this at some point, but I very, oh, Camacho just subscribed, thank you so very much, how did I miss that? Oh, yeah, yeah, but thank you, thank you very much, uh, Camacho, new, new, new name as well, I don't think I've seen him. Um, what was I saying? The reason I'm late is because I just on the, on a, what do you call it? On an impulse. Booked flights uh, to Stockholm. So I'm going to be going uh, to Stockholm for the Wilton Cup. The last... Whoa. I think my other laptop has definitely lost it. Look what's happening. Can I show you this? Holy. This isn't great. Either either I've I've got so much fever. Can I do something about this? Let me see if some comments. Okay, maybe I fixed it. I don't know if my laptop's lost the plot or if I'm so feverish that I'm hallucinating. But something, I think something is not good. <laughs> something is definitely not good with this laptop. I was hoping, you know, when I bought this new one, I was hoping that this one would at least survive so I could use it to read the chat, but I think it's now just dead and i've never learned how to use this pop-up chat let me quickly go back to this view and bring up the chat here let me see if i can sort this out sorry guys for all the technical issues today not sort this out <laughs> not ideal for ignoring your call to entertain us and bloody hell, I have to step it up to catch up with Blazero. <laughs> Morten, thank you so much. That is an incredible donation. Um, what can I say? I've forgotten all about my cold now. I'll buy you a drink or two or three on Saturday to thank you for that. That is absolutely amazing. Um, I know you've been a whale. <laughs> yeah. I do need a new... I was actually saying the other day, I, I think I'm not going to try and buy a new laptop because the laptop I use right here is fine. This one is not fine. Um, but I think I'm going to try and buy an actual proper computer, not a laptop. Because um, people have been telling me that my stream quality isn't good enough. Yeah, I think meanwhile the other laptop has completely died on me. Um... So what was I saying? Pia, Pia has just joined the chat, but once again, Morton, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it means a lot, and that would help me, that will go a long way towards a new computer and whatnot. I also really want to buy some new um, equipment for vlogging. I've really been enjoying the vlogging. Let me put the command in one more time. At some point I'll do some chess, but today isn't a normal stream, so really been enjoying the, the vlogging. Also today, another thing, I'm not going to go on for too long because there is football on. Um, you probably know I'm a big football fan, so I watched Italy yesterday, not qualify 
for the first time since 1958. Congrats Sweden, by the way. Congrats Pierre. And yeah, uh, and no, there won't be a tournament tonight. Tonight I'm just going to show you my games from this weekend. And then go off, uh, watch Denmark play against Ireland. But yeah, Pierre, what I was just saying, I'm going to be coming to Stockholm for the Rilton Cup just the last few days, but it looks like I'm going to be doing a commentary for the last couple of days. So it's basically just a friendly work visit, combining everything. Um, some more exciting news is I'm going to be working at the Tata Steel tournament, which I am uh, incredibly excited about. Uh, really, really. Yeah, Ingmar, I was just talking to Ingmar uh, half an hour ago, just booked my tickets 20 minutes ago, Pia. That's what I was saying. That's the reason I'm late, because I just booked uh, my tickets to Stockholm. But yeah, uh, I'm going to be part of the Tata Steel uh, media team. It's not completely clear yet what I'll be doing, but probably a mix of um, mix of commentary, mix of social media stuff, interviews, etc., etc. Uh, first time I'm part of that team. I've I've been to to Vikansi twice before. Uh, no, three times before, twice as a tourist. And once uh, working for Chess24, but to be part of the official team is, of course, absolutely amazing. And I couldn't be happier. Uh, before that, and let me tell you one more time. So I'm off. I think I've mentioned it about a million times by now. Off to Simon's Crypt uh, event on Friday. So that's on Saturday. Then on Monday, I fly on to the Faroe Islands. Going to be playing some chess myself. Uh, in the so-called Runavik Open. <laughs> Didn't realize how hard talking was even going to be. Um, so yeah, playing in Runavik Open. Then after that I fly straight to London where I'll be working at the London Chess Classic then home for one day and then I'm going to Poland uh, for the um, European Rapid and Blitz the first time I'm going to be playing in that event also never been to Poland before uh, so really really looking forward to that and then after that I think I'm going to take a two week break before I go to the Wilton Cup because it's all been a bit much lately I mean I'm not complaining I mean I have an amazing life but it's been very busy so that is the plan for now. And then I know Frozen Edge, I think, is still in the chat. Frozen Edge, Banretti, is still in my agenda. Too weak, too slow. You look tired. Hope you feel better soon. <laughs> yeah, I, I, if you missed the start of the show, I basically, I, I just have a cold. Um, I'm not sure how clearly you can see that, but I think I'm pretty feverish. And my throat isn't great. My nose... My nose is giving me a bit of a rest right now, but it's been closed for most of the last couple of days. Booze is super... I actually... I'm not going to be drinking too much, I think, in the next few months. I need to get back to some healthy... I think I'm going to do Simon's Crypt event, and if I survive that, I'm going to take, take it easy for the coming few months. Um, hot lemon drink with two teaspoons. I think I'm going to do that after the show. Um, my mom is so lovely. She's been preparing me all these drinks with ginger as well. Ginger, honey, lemon. So it's been good. Okay, right. Um, my other laptop has come back to life. So let's go back to the play zone now. Here we are. <laughs> um, Blaze Row is a teetotal. Oh dear, that's bad news because I was hoping at the crypt event everyone would sort of be out of it. <laughs> so that means I'll have to sort of, <laughs> sort of behave. Uh, okay, so I created the study. Um, mm -mm. So for NCL this weekend, played two games. Saturday was a bit of a disaster for the team because we only made a draw against um, against Wood Green. Actually, let me show you the results before I show you 
before I show you my game. Uh, so we are pool B. So in the first round, there you see it. Let me zoom in a bit. So that was our result on Saturday. Not great. Uh, we were outweighting them by almost 100 points on average. And I was playing against my good fr friend Anna Srebrenic. Uh, not a pairing I had expected. I, I was thinking I would play Sarah Haggerty. So I, for once in my life, had done some early preparation. And then the board pairings come out an hour and a half before. And turned out I was playing Anna, who plays something completely different. And um, I'm going to show you the game in a second. I can already reveal it was a quick draw, which wasn't the plan, but such is life. So yeah, that was a disappointing match result. I actually, I quite, I don't think the, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When you have the same structure, oh, I'm so tired. Uh, like a mirror. What do you call that? Help me out, guys. Like when you have the same position as your opponent. I'm not going to say anything else until I remember what the word I'm looking for is. Um, yeah, symmetrical. Thank you, Morten. I quite like the symmetry in our results there. So David and I with the only with the only two draws. Um, Chocolate, yeah, chocolate is the word I'm always looking for. Actually, I bought this, I can't even remember where I bought this. Mini Kinder Bueno, which is great. Uh, anyway, chocolate, chocolate is always good. Uh, so yeah, that was our result on Saturday. And now let me show you my game. Uh, mm, do I like the Grunfeld? Never played the Grunfeld in my life, I'm afraid. So, this was the quick game uh, from Saturday. What happened is, I hadn't expected uh, d4 at all. I was expecting knight f3, and I was going to play... Uh, I was going to play a Leningrad Dutch. I looked at some lines. I had a, a secret helper <laughs> who helped me check some, some lines before the game. So d4 was the first shock, but I was hoping she would retranspose into what I'd looked at after f5. So she usually plays stuff with knight f3, um, g3, c4. And I was hoping we'd come back to that, but no, uh, after I played f5, she only, she fought for maybe a minute, and then she played e4. And what happened after e4 is that I was out of book. <laughs> so I don't think, I don't remember, like, I know I always say how bad my repertoire is, etc, etc. But this was really particularly bad. I can't remember the last time I was out of book on move 2. She's pretty bad. Let's see. Just received a mail message from David. It's David's birthday today, by the way. Davy Boy, aka David Howell, turning 27. I think that's correct. Uh, going to be seeing him. I'm actually I'm flying to London on Friday with my good friend Leonard Otis. We're meeting up in Amsterdam Airport and flying to London together celebrating David's birthday on Friday night, crypt event on Saturday, and I think Sunday is going to be a hungover day in bed uh, by the looks of it. But anyway, so e4, and I was out of book, and I was like, shit, because <laughs> I, I know that these kind of gambits, um, I mean, I don't know, about, I don't even know, if someone knows what this is even called, I have no idea, uh, but I know that any gambit can be extremely dangerous if you don't, if you're not familiar with it. Um, I I don't know how long I fought for here, probably five, six minutes because I was just shell-shocked. But then it dawned on me, okay, I mean, I have to take. I, I couldn't really think of any reasonable alternatives. And she, she blitzed knight c3 out. And, um, oh, it's the Staunton Gambit. According to Leeches, where is it? Oh, <laughs> cheers, Morton. <laughs> At least tonight I can blame everything on my fever, so 
Yeah. <laughs> mm. And here I sank into another thought. I was wondering, I mean, I, I still haven't looked this up, I haven't had the time. I was wondering, of course, if I... No, I guess d5 never works because of a queen h5. So... <laughs> so knight f6 seemed like a logical move to play. Bishop g5. And here was the first moment where I thought I actually have quite a few options here. And I did look at this. Um, what was the main move here? It's not the move I played, but my, my secret helper, he told me he actually liked the move I played, g6. He asked me if I knew this. And I was like, I didn't even know e2, uh, e4, well, e4, e2, e4. Um, so no, I didn't know this at all. Oh, knight c6 is the, the move, according to Blair. So knight c6. And in the same position, G M moves. Do you want me to call you G M moves or G moves? I never, never quite sure. But yeah, my reasoning was, if I don't know this, I don't really want to allow any D five. And I thought G six. But I wanted, I basically wanted her to take, which she did, because I thought maybe I'm sort of. Um, forcing her to take because I thought I am I must now be threatening d5 d5 wasn't possible earlier because um, she could take and play queen h5 g moves okay <coughs> so g moves um, so yeah I thought with g6 I was sort of maybe forcing the matter and she didn't it indeed take on f6 but she told me afterwards she looked at it and she probably should have played f3 well she should definitely have played f3 Instead of bishop takes f6, and here, yeah. I mean, it would just be a game um, where white gives up a pawn, but gets some decent compensation, I guess. I don't even know what I should do here. Do I have to take? I think there's a, a good chance that if she had played f3, I would have played e3. Um, so declining this entire gambit thing. I think that's always maybe a, a reasonable thing to do if if you're not familiar and you get caught out like this in the opening. So you can take or play d5, this is a true of ICC. So after f3, this is an option and this is an option. What about e3? e3 must be an option as well, surely. But yeah, anyway, she took on f6, e takes, and she decided to just take the pawn back straight away. And now again, I um, took some time here because I wasn't sure. My first idea was to play both f5 and d5. So maybe start with f5 and I don't know, knight g3 or knight c3. But then I realized I don't really want to give up this square. So once that had dawned on me, I thought, do I want to play f5 and then, I don't, I don't even know, and follow it up with a d6 structure? Or do I want to play d5 and keep my pawn on f6? So eventually I, I went for d5. I went for d5 and after knight g3. Oh, Asios! Hello! What is Black thinking about castling at this early point? Well, I wanted to get castled, of course, and initially here my, my plan uh, was to play bishop g7. And then suddenly <laughs> I got a bit, I panicked a bit. Gubanj, Gubanj, the winner of my last Blitz tournament. Hello, good evening. Piece of sheet, Midnight Fox Data, Data, Dota. <laughs> Again, if you're just joining now, I have a cold, which is why I sound a bit weird and which, I'm, which is why I'm struggling <laughs> with basically everything. But bishop g7 had been my initial plan, but suddenly I got scared that uh, she would play queen f3. 
No, sorry. Sorry, sorry, I'm rambling. I hadn't intended bishop g7. I had intended bishop d6. That's what I want to say. That was my original intention. Piece of sheet. No, not hungover at all. I'm very ill, as you might hear. I have a big cold. I have fever. My nose is fucked. My throat isn't great. I've been going through a lot of water and tea the last few days. So yeah, uh, bishop d6 had been my intention, but then suddenly I thought, what about queen f3, and if I play c6, let's say, and long castles? And suddenly I didn't like my position here at all. I thought she's just going to play h4, h5, and her attack now comes really quickly. So when I saw that, I decided to go queen e7 here. Because I thought if she if she plays one of the pieces... Actually, after the game, my friend uh, Jean-Pierre Leroux, Grandmaster Jean-Pierre Leroux from France, he, he was very critical of her move, uh, Queen E2. He said she had to play Bishop E2. And I said to him, but then, what, you're sort of a bit stuck. And the computer doesn't actually like Bishop E2 or Knight E2. The computer does say that Queen E2 is the best move here. So after Bishop E2, I played Bishop H6 to stop her from castling. She took, played bishop d3, and here I offered a draw. Because I was already starting to not feel great, this was basically the start of my cold. My nose was runny. So I offered a draw. I also thought, considering the match situation, um, I'll show you again. So, oh, so this was the the pairings. I thought this is one of the two boards where we are lower weighted and um, I'm black and I'm not feeling great. So I thought I think my draw offer is reasonable but then didn't quite work out because I got back to my room and the second I got back to my room I basically had a message from Vlad saying why do you offer a draw? You're already better. And yeah it is. I mean I could... I, I think I understood. I was not much better, just maybe a tiny, tiny bit. Because I do have the bishop pair. Um, going to, I guess, get developed fairly quickly. And it's just maybe nice and easy to play. But there you go. Um, that was my first game. So not so much to say about that. Um, just probably have to become more fighting in the future, regardless of how I feel. So, on to Sunday's game. Fiona, what area do you cover in the Florencia League? Do you mean geographical area? Like where we play, or what do you mean? I'm not sure. <coughs> Bakuz, I'm not sure what you'd said. Um, Mubot seems to be in a very strict mood. So on to round two, which was a lot more interesting, thankfully. Uh, so in round two, we were playing against... No, that's not our group. Round two, we were playing against Alba, newly promoted team from Scotland. I was playing against Ali Roy. I've known her for a while, never played against her, and despite feeling awful, I knew I'd have to fight. I was right. I'm almost outrating her by 300 points. It was an early morning game, which never fond of morning games, but okay. I was right. Um, a Friday night, despite not feeling great, had, had no, Saturday night had ended up being a late night. So I woke up on Sunday thinking, okay, today it's going to be all or nothing. I saw she played, uh, she plays both e6 and c5 on move one. So against c5, Against c5, I was intending. Excuse me. <sighs> so, I was saying, against c5, I was intending a Grand Prix attack. <laughs> and against e6, which is what she did, I, w I, um, I wanted to play Ring Gambit, which ended up on the board. Yeah, just to get back to your question, Mac, about the bishop pair. I think it's also, I mean, I also like knights, but especially in the position I just showed you, the bishops do have a lot of squares, and I think it's just, yeah, they control more area of the board. 
than the Knights. Speaking of area, to get back to Blaze Rose question, we almost uh, always play in the Midlands, somewhere close to Birmingham. And this time it was Telford. Baku, it's your birthday today. In that case, happy birthday. And uh, you share a birthday with David Howell as well as Robin van Kampen. So that's a good birthday. Um, have I played her? No, I never played Ali before. Against Anna, it was my third game, actually. The first time she beaten me ages ago. Maybe in 2002 or something. And then we'd made a draw in 2010. You can see more about that. Plug, plug. On my vlog. Um, and... So yeah, the wing gambit. Uh, I knew the wing gambit. It's a sort of opening. I, I started playing it in 2011. And it's very much an all or nothing uh, opening. You give up a pawn for quick development, uh, attacking chances and compensation. But it can also go wrong, especially if your opponents are prepared for it. So what I do nowadays, I, I when I started out playing it, I played it a fair few times in a row. So the games weren't in the database yet. And I actually I had a very good score with it. Uh, but then I put it aside for a few years. And nowadays I just play it maybe once or twice uh, a year in classical games. No, it's not a Simon influence. I think my, my former coach actually taught me. Um, put this towards the desktop PC, Fiona. Plays a role. You and Morton, you guys are just incredible. I'm gobsmacked. Thank you so, so very much. I promise, as soon as I come back at the start of the year, well, I'm going to start a computer fund right now. Um, really means a lot. So thank you. And drinks, oh, you don't drink. Can I buy you a, a tea on Saturday or Coke? Um, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, okay, back to the game. So, what I was saying is I don't play it so much these days because when the opponents prepare, it can backfire. But I was hoping she wouldn't... I was actually... I wasn't sure because I played it already back in May, a game which was in the database. And when she took... And I played e A3, and she took on A3 instantly. I was a bit scared because that was one of the, the, the moves I hadn't looked at at all. Uh, I looked at all the main lines. I also looked at, because I didn't know what she was going to play. Here, there's a few moves. There's b6. Uh, there is... Recently, someone played c4 against me. So I, I looked at a lot of stuff, but this one I'd forgotten to look at completely. But I knew, I thought I remembered um, that what white does is just play the normal developing moves from the, the wing gambit. So, all of this. I mean, I, I didn't, I wasn't following my preparation, but these are normal, just normal moves uh, in the wing gambit. And here was the first moment where I started thinking, I wasn't sure, do I want to just get castled? What exactly do I want to do? How soon do I want to take this pawn? Uh, yeah, exactly. Just leave my J picture alone. If you don't like it, too bad for you. It's not going to go anywhere. It's been there <coughs> for almost as long as I can remember. Um. <sighs> so yeah, uh, I decided eventually to go H4 to try and cramp her a bit more because basically what I want to do of course, is get my pieces looking towards this king. I At some point during the game, I was wondering if she could possibly ever castle queenside, but I think it's just uh, too much. Like, there is no way she can ever do that. The king will never be safe. Um, <laughs> no, sorry, GBRL came. <laughs> I didn't mean to, to call you out in particular. It's just I've been getting a lot of shit. Uh, on my YouTube when I upload the videos, so 
I didn't mean to call you out. <laughs> it is an interesting picture, I agree with you. Um, so yeah, uh, I was saying black can never really, never really castle queenside. So what you want to do is, of course, to make him as uncomfortable castling kingside as possible. Also, it's not so easy because one of the ideas, one of my ideas behind h4 was that I want to stop her from coming here. I mean, maybe I could take that knight anyway, but I thought now I can just probably play g4. <clears throat> so h6. I was wondering if she could have replied with um, with h5, but I think she shouldn't have because then g5 square becomes too weak forever. So h6 was probably the right way to go. Now I decided to take this pawn, a6, stopping my knight from coming to b5. h5, again with the same idea, just sort of trying to cramp black's position on the king side. Knight a5, knight h4. When I played knight h4, the idea was to um, to get my queen to g4. g4 is a square where the queen often goes in a lot of French lines, of course. Um, but I think maybe I underestimated her play on the queen side a little bit. Queen c7 attacking c3, so bishop d2, b5, and now I decided to castle myself. Uh, another idea of putting the knight to h4 was to, to follow it up now with f4, f5, because I need to do something. I'm still my pawn down, so there needs to be... Um, needs to be some attack, otherwise I'll just end up being a pawn down. So I castled, and I think here was the first sign that I was not in my right mind, because I instantly took on c4, and only after I took on c4 did I realize that she can actually take back. I'd only looked at b takes, and when I took, I was like, hold on, she can take with the d pawn, which she did, of course, gaining this square. So bishop c2 and knight d5. <clears throat> Because, yeah, I have been drinking quite a lot of lemon and ginger. Actually, my mother did exactly that this morning before she left to, to work. Prepared me a lemon ginger honey drink. I think she's coming back home in half an hour, so I'm hoping <laughs> for some more. Not that I cannot do it myself, but so much better when your mommy does it for you. Uh, <laughs> Blaze a row, yeah, that wardrobe is in Hamburg. It's never coming back, I'm afraid. Okay, so knight d5. Um, I continue with my plan, of course. Attacking on the king side, she does the same on the queen side. f5. Uh, and then, this move really came as a surprise to me, and I thought this move cannot be good. I thought she can't just ignore all of my threats. Um, Pia has to go. See you very soon, Pia. Thanks for dropping by and hopefully see you in Stockholm in January. <clears throat> so, Queen B6. Also, I know the football has started, so if someone wants to keep me updated, if there is any action in the chat, that'd be very much appreciated. Queen B6, I thought that must be too slow, but then after taking here, bishop takes e6, and now, I think this is the first critical moment from the game, at least, uh, the first critical moment of the game, at least from my point of view. Because here I sank into a 40-minute thing. Because when I, when I took on f6, I knew she would have to take with the bishop, and I had only attended uh, bishop a4 check. And I thought, yay, I'm giving her a check. She has to go king d8, and I've uh, I've taken away her right to castle. But then when we got to the when we got to the position, I realized after king d8, what do I actually do? I, I have given her a check, but now what? Suddenly this knight, if it goes to f5, it's not hitting anything. F7 is defended. 
she's going to either play b3, trapping my bishop here, or take on c3. And I basically I couldn't find a couldn't find a, a follow up here. So so I sank into this deep deep thing. <coughs> I considered two other moves: bishop here, uh, trying to to pin. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. Trying to pin this knight. Do you think chocolate will help? Maybe chocolate will help. Uh, but what was I worried about here? I thought she can take... I should probably be looking at this with an engine. Can we quickly turn on the engine? No, it's funny, the, the computer always likes white. Queen a4. But what if she goes to d8? Ah, now I just give up this bishop. Yeah, okay, and this must be great for me. So what's the best? b3. <coughs> and after b3, I mean, if the computer says it's just equal, then I must have decent compensation, considering I'm a pawn down. Um, but yeah, what's funny here in this position after after the game, I looked at the, I looked at it with David Howell, and with an engine. And at first, you know, I have only three engine suggestions. And at first, Bishop f5 wasn't one of the top three. But then, and I was like, come on, come on, come on. And then after the thirty seconds, there it was in the number one spot, Bishop f5. <clears throat> and here. During the game, what I had to spend most of my time on was looking at this. Of course, the move she played, b3, afterwards I realized is a lot more human move. But here, I had intended this, this, and what I hadn't... Like, I had looked at bishop here for a while, but then... Um, basically, what I had missed, I thought that here... The best move is, well, the only move is taking back, but I thought she could take here. But incredibly, I can just go to h1, giving up this knight with check, but after bishop h3, the attack is just too strong, um, and white is completely winning. So, and here, after f takes e6, the computer gives a completely crazy line. I'll just click through it because I couldn't really understand. Uh, much of it. It's just crazy stuff. And a draw. <laughs> so that's what the computer has to say about this. But after, uh, when I played bishop f5, I thought if she takes and if we get here, I had intended to play bishop e1. I'm not sure how good or bad that is. Yeah, again, computer just gives roughly equal. So that's probably what I would have played. Again, with a position where there's compensation, but uh, it's not so not so clear. What's there to lull about? G moves. So, but anyway, uh, when I played bishop f5, after calculating these b takes c3 lines for ages, then I suddenly realized that b3 is actually the much more uh, much more human move. So b3 she played, uh, I took, took, knight f5. I think here I was finally getting happier with my... Well, I, I'd, I'd been kind of happy. You know, that's something I have to say, <clears throat> is that I was... Uh, after the game I was quite happy, but I thought, oh, the computer is probably going to invalidate all of it. But... Um, Turned out the computer is quite happy all the way through, so that was nice. And um, yeah, the only thing that I was worried about, of course, are these pawns. And she should have start started pushing them right away. I put plus equal because that's what the computer says. But this is, of course, a very double-edged position. I mean, anything can still happen here. We're both short-ish on time, not too short, but. Mm, but yeah, I think g6 uh, 
the king is just going to be too weak in the long term. F takes, and here I missed the better move. I played knight g3 because I was so obsessed with getting to e4. But knight uh, e3 instead was just pretty much winning on this bot because <clears throat> she kind of has to take because I'm hitting c4. Yeah, the Bakus, I agreed. The pawns look very scary. But there's another line which I didn't save actually. After a5, queen e2. Like at some point I just stopped the pawns with the very cool. I think it was here, let me see. After queen e2, knight b6. Yeah, and the computer just plays uh, bishop c1 and claims everything is under control. But it is, I agree, it looks scary. Um, so yeah, g6 here, and I, I said I should have played knight e3, because she has to take, <clears throat> and after bishop takes, basically the problem is I have two threats, d5 <clears throat> and rook f6. And if she tries stopping both of them by playing queen d5, I play queen g4. I play queen g4 and uh, despite still being a pawn down, the computer gives plus. <coughs> plus minus, a big advantage for white. And I think, uh, I think it's very close to be winning, especially in a practical game, it's very hard to defend for black. So, I played knight g3 instead, let her back into the game, and, whoops, <laughs> what did I do? And after queen e2, uh, this is where her decisive mistake came. Ariane James, 3, hello, welcome. Uh, here she had to play rook hc8, and after rook a5, rook ab8, this is what the computer gives, and he says, equal, unclear. But, I mean, who knows what this is. I've won my pawn back, but she has this very dangerous passer, and I think all three results um, would be possible here. <clears throat> but after queen c6 and rook a5, uh, the position is already very, very close to be winning for white. And after rook h c eight, that was the final, final mistake because after knight h knight c five, it's now just game over. <clears throat> um, if she doesn't take, if she goes anywhere, what was I? I was thinking if she goes, let's say here. I mean, I can just take, but I can also play queen f three with threats of mating. This is just over. Um, in the game she took, but now c4 falls, and um, and that is also just the end of the game. Actually, after rook takes, I thought I was being very clever by taking with the pawn, but queen takes is even stronger. But d takes c4 is also good enough, also winning. Um, so d takes, and... Um, yeah, there's just too many. If you want to keep this pawn. Oh, actually, there was one more line actually here. Because after rook c8, which she played, and I took on h6, she could have played b2. I forgot about that. Because now, uh, if I go rook d1, the problem is I'm not threatening to take here because this is still a threat. So if she played b2, let me see, what did the computer say here? It's still good for me, but not not as straightforwardly winning as uh, queen takes e5 would have been. But after queen e5, um, that is just it, because now I do have rook d1. <coughs> and black is losing a piece. She played king here, but then everything just drops. Red check. And that's the end of the game. I think it's also very close to being the end of the stream because I'm not sure my vo voice is going to hold up for much longer. See Blaze Row and Morton. 
<laughs> Bolle! <laughs> Do not try this at home. <laughs> and the bloopers. Glad you enjoyed it. I think I also, actually, you know what happens with the vlog. So uh, Anton squared me, aka Dan, he ed edits the vlogs. He uploads them to my YouTube channel. So basically, I just discovered them when he uploads them to my YouTube channel as well. <laughs> so when I watched it earlier today, I was like, oh, I really like this. I think it's also fun what he did with the car, David's car footage. But yeah, I think to do not try this at home. That's the funniest bit of the vlog. And I'm glad you glad you enjoyed it, Buller. Uh, Morton, I never realized you've never played over the board. <laughs> Actually, Morten, I'm uh, I'm going to be sharing a flat with two Danish guys at the weekend, and one of them, I think, also has barely ever played over the board. So, you will not be not be alone. <clears throat> Gravy boot, thank you. Um, yeah, I think what I what I was saying, I think it was nice for my confidence uh, to win this game in such style. You probably know by now I love a good attacking game. Um, I don't play so much these days, so it's nice to win in style. Uh, but I will be back behind the board next week, playing nine, nine rounds in the Runabic Open. Of course, I will be vlogging from that. I'll also be vlogging from the Crypt event. I debated for a long time whether or not that was a good idea. But I've come to the conclusion it has to be done. Uh, do I think Simon will ever rematch Spend Fine Gold? I would guess so. I think so. Um, yeah, you should try the Wing Gambit. Once again, what I would say about the Wing Gambit, it works very well in Blitz. And um, over the board in classical games, it also works well, but mostly if, if, if it comes as a surprise to your opponent. If you play it all the time, maybe not so much recommended. But yeah, it's a surprise weapon. Uh, it's great. Let me bring this back. And, um, yeah, win Gambit for the win. <laughs> I may win the Blitz event. I very much doubt it, considering the likes of David Howell are playing. But I'll give it my best shot. Um, let's see if there's any more questions in the chat. Otherwise, I'm afraid I'm going to call it a day, even though I've just been going for an hour. I really need to recover <laughs> and stop speaking. <clears throat> Plays a row. You can't go into the tournament with that mentality. Can't do it. <clears throat> I'll do. I'll give you some mental, psychological coaching before the tournament starts. Wing win gambit. Is that gambit exist? Do you mean wing gambit or win gambit? Why does uptime not work? Uptime really should should work. What if I try? Probably. I oh know you have to put the. Uh, yeah, only fifty five minutes. My shortest stream ever. And to be fair, I wouldn't have streamed at all if if it wasn't for the fact I promised to do it yesterday. Can you play without a king? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Wait, thank you. It's over, feels bad, man. Okay, let's play one game. One. Just to get to one hour. I feel bad if I don't go on for an hour. I only have one challenge, so let's do it. Mana Valam. Three minute challenge. If he's still around. No, 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 no. How's the football going? Probably if nobody said anything. Oh, he did play. Let's play a sensible game for once. Or let's try anyway. If he plays bishop b5, that's the end of the sensible. Ness, if he plays... Oh. I was hoping for bishop b5 when I would have played f5. Now the sensibleness continues. Uh, 
this is the game I played in the Luxembourgish League. Actually, a few weeks ago started like this. And I somehow managed. That is still the game. And I think he played bishop g5 here, and I played h6, g5, and just tried to mate him, which worked out really well. <laughs> Sensible, but okay, what do we do? I'm thinking I'm hesitating between bishop b6, a5, bishop e6, bishop g5, h6. Okay, h6 must be sensible. Now let's play. I never know really if I should go a6 or a5. There's so many subtleties here which I'm not that familiar with. This is something. Well, it's not. That, I think it to be a Joko piano, yeah. Can I let him take this? Probably I can. I'm not sure how. Uh, I think a joke of piano is if you put the knight to d2 and you play with c3 and d3. So knight takes. I'd probably try and keep some pieces on the board and play it like this. And try and get some attacking chances. Maybe I'll play knight g4 next. Um, so knight g4. What I want to do is get my king to queen to h4. Ideally get my king out of the way. Play f5. You know my style by now, I think. I guess he has to move the bishop. I'm not sure where to. Maybe f4. Bishop f4 seems to be a reasonable move. Hmm. That I'm surprised by. That I'm really surprised by. Okay. Okay, let's take away the c6 square. Really don't want this land knighting, landing on d5. And I think now I just need to now I just need to consolidate and I'm doing well here. So he wants to bring his knight here. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can even play bishop e6. Although no, then I no. Okay, can I do can I do something more active? I could have done it a second ago actually. <laughs> when so now I'm threatening to take here. Can I somehow get rid of this knight? Need to be faster. No, I don't see it at the moment. So I need to continue playing some sensible moves. And really, most of all, faster, faster. Need to. I think I'm going to bring the bishop over to c7. I'm not sure yet where this knight is going. I think I'm going to play knight g6 in a second. Oh, what did he do? I didn't even see he moved. Okay. This I can take, I think. Unless I'm missing something, but I don't think so. Okay, now we want to mate on h2, of course, somehow. That was bad news. That was really bad news. I don't know if I could have played. I'm just getting mated. I think. Okay, let's make a run for it. I'll just check. Okay, no, I didn't do that, but 
How do I stop him from checkmating me? Can we flag him somehow? I don't have the greatest flagging technique as you can see, but hopefully I can still get there. <sighs> what a way to end the stream, that was dreadful. <laughs> Queen G5, let's check it out. Oh dear me. <clears throat> when was it that I... How do I go into analysis mode? Analysis mode. Oh my, oh my. So what was Blair saying? Queen G5. Help me out, Blair. Which point? I think here I must be in trouble already. Maybe there is no knight. Oh no. Ah, rook takes. What? Rook takes d4, green takes, queen g3. And he just wants to give a perpetual. Okay, I see. But where did things go wrong? I mean, this must have been winning here. After c4, just knight takes f4. Simple chess. Okay, at least did I make it over an hour. Good stuff. <laughs> but I really, really am off now, final plug. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, once again, sorry about the short stream. Really not feeling great, as you can tell. I'll be back tomorrow night, hopefully feeling better. Um, tomorrow night I will be doing another Blitz tournament and just some fun stuff. For now I'm off. Get some rest, drink some tea, watch some football. Thank you everyone for sticking around. Thank you so, so, so much to Blazero and Morton for your incredible donations. I really look forward to, to meeting you both on Saturday. <coughs> Need to learn to play the ukulele. <laughs> How do you come up with that? For now, I, before I learn the ukulele, I need a new computer and I need, there's a lot of things I need to do before I learn the ukulele. But yeah, once again, uh, thank you so, so much. Blazer and Morton for the incredible donations. See you on Saturday or maybe before that tomorrow when I stream again, same place, same time, 8 p.m. Central European. For night now, good night all or good day wherever you are in the world. Good morning, whatever. Enough from me. Cheers. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.